So, when it's full of speed upgrades, this thing goes at 256 times normal. Yeah, this one guy. Equivalent to 256 machines. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't need any more solar neutron activators. But I completed the quest anyway. Just because. So, now, oh, and look at that, we actually, yeah, we got, we got a quest for this induction stuff. That's good. Oh, you know what it is? I think this stuff requires lithium to produce as well. It requires another use of this lithium here. So, so that's a thing. Anyway. <clears throat> Our next fusion fuel is going to be produced, again, from water. But we're starting with a different production using it. We need to make an electric pump. You see it's a relatively simple device. This is just like a build craft pump, of course, because I don't have the thing in my... That is so freaking weird. It's just like a build craft pump, except of course it uses RF, and it's more consistent, and I don't think it actually physically picks up uh, blocks. It's just so long as it's over an infinite source of water, it produces. Really? Did I run through the entire supply of those already? Should be. I ordered a couple hundred of them. Huh. Dang. Those advanced solar power, solar panel generators are expensive in terms of these basic circuit boards. And they aren't even all that good. They produce, let's see, I think they produce 240 RF per tick each. Yeah, 240. That's it. Compare that to the gas burning generator which is producing, well, <laughs> I think its maximum is something like 28,000 RF per tick. Yeah, that's, it's a, it's a little bit disappointing. Still, I guess they aren't really being used for power. They're being used for, well, the thing that'll produce power. Anyway, okay, there's the pattern set. And what is this quest calling for? It is a crafting test, so I have to make them by hand, and it wants four of them plus the upgrades. So, on its own, an electric pump will just pump water. But if it has this filter upgrade here, which, oh, mantle lens gravity, that's new. If it has this filter lens, instead it will produce heavy water at a much slower rate. So that's a Rune of Winter. Well, I think I crafted a bunch of those a while back because of derpery. Yeah, so that's convenient. So I'm just going to need four pumps and four filter upgrades. Uh, it only takes one of each, and I think I can still use speed upgrades, so in all probability I'm only going to need one pump. Okay, there's the pumps. And there's the filters. Now, I do believe that these have to be over a legit infinite water source. You can't just like put them over a thing of water. They aren't like aqueous accumulators. I'm just going to put these a little bit over here. Yes. Yeah, let's go down one more. Then I should be able to put the electric pump, like, right here. And I'll just have to pipe over power, I guess. Ah, yes, and I need to give it its filter upgrade. Yes, and it supports speed and energy upgrades. Let's actually get a collection of those on hand, and let's see how fast it can go. At a minimum, though, I think speed upgrades always do at least ten times speed. So, yeah, I really only need one of them. Okay, now I just need to run the power over. Mm, 
That's interesting. It must... That, that sticky outy bit must be a power port, so it's sided on that, which is really unusual. Yeah, there you go. You see it's filling up with heavy water. So the speed is doing 10x, okay? That's just fine by me. And yes, those energy upgrades are also helping. If it's only doing 10x, I think energy upgrades always do 10x, so the energy upgrades and the speed upgrades will in fact cancel out, which is nice. Well, they won't cancel out, but it'll be running 10 times faster for effectively free. Okay, now block that off. And I do think that, once again, I need a rotary condensator. Let's see here. Well, let's see if that was the quest. Yeah, that was the quest. Ah, no. It needs to be run through an electrolytic separator. Okay. Oh, and it gave me yet more. Lovely. I would rather have one device running very fast, though. Thank you very much. Let's actually cover up the power line. So... Very simple. Just electrolytic separator there, and I'll have two basic gas tanks because it'll also produce oxygen. And I will need to vent the oxygen. Okay. Ooh, look at that. It's purple drank. And of course, I shouldn't have put my power cables away. Yeah, so note that it doesn't need a uh, an order to pull. Because it is a pump, and you would only expect to pull from a pump. So why would you... Why would you ever push to a pump? That is not what a pump does. So that's a little bit of smart design. Okay, gas tank there. Gas tank there. And that is our deuterium. So we want this one to be the oxygen, and we want it to dump excess. Good. Good. Hmm. Should be able to rotate that gas tank. Yep, there we go. Okay, so I'll have the deuterium piping out to here. Now, the one reason I want to pipe it out is because... Okay, to run the fusion reactor itself, you pipe in just pure deuterium and tritium. But you need something called a whole room. This thing, whole rom, in order to start the reactor up the first time. And any time that, you know, it, it just runs out. And that's fairly, that, that's fairly easy to make, but it needs to be filled with deuterium tritium fuel which we can only make in, uh, what's it called? It is made in a chemical infuser, which I don't actually have on Autocraft yet because I was wrong and I don't have one in my, in my current power system.
but luckily it's a fairly simple device. Yes, just like so. And what this chemical infuser will allow us to do is it'll allow us to take any two, two gases and an item and combine them together. Or, well, it'll allow us to combine two gases or two liquids, or it allows us to combine chemicals, long story short. And I will put this right here, because I don't want this to be directly connected. I want this to be kind of... I want this to be coming off of a tube. Because I'll also be sending the deuterium and tritium directly to be used. Probably with a quantum transportal ponder. So, first I'm going to take the tritium. Then the deuterium. Hmm, do I just not have enough for it to be... Oh, the electric... No, the electrolytic separator is on power. I should be outputting. Weird. Ah, there it is. Oh, so deuterium is red. I'm combining Baja Blast and um, um, Red Fanta. Okay. There we go. Now we're producing DT fuel. Yes, and this is the exact color that you would expect it to be. Now, do I have a quest to make the hall room? No, it's going... Ah, oh, there it is. Yes. So that just requires some gold dust. Four, I do believe. Into coal infusion. Now, I'm not exactly sure how to fill it. Hopefully the quest will tell us. Okay, there's the hull room. Of course, I, I, I got ahead of myself. I flew too close to the sun. Uh... Okay, there's one built. Okay, filling the hall room. An infuser, place your hall room in the slot below the DT fuel tank. Okay. Yep, you see it only takes a very tiny little bit. And that is... Well, okay, technically... You can inject DT fuel into your fusion reactor, and it will work just as well as separate tritium and deuterium. But I think it's actually less efficient. I think, like, the feed rate has to be much, much higher, and it doesn't produce any more energy. So, yeah, this is pretty much going to be the only use of this stuff. Oh, yeah, now the pipes have finally filled out. Okay. So, we have our little spark plug, the little bomb that'll start the reaction off. We have our two fuel sources, producing and ready. Now we need a source of ignition. We need a laser. Oh, and yes, I need to... Derp. We need to make these fusion lasers and laser amplifiers. So, and what these will do is they will provide the great initial burst of energy to get the reaction going. And, well, they're essentially just a straight upgrade of good old Buildcraft lasers. Okay. So how many of them does it want me to make for the quest? Just one. Okay. There's the pattern, just in case I ever want more of them. 
And there's the craft. Okay, and then I need the amplifiers. Which is actually relatively simple. Really, I don't have any of those parts? I should at least have chipsets. Eh, stupid stackable things. And there we are, the amplifier and the craft. Put those patterns away. And there we are. Okay. You'll probably want facing the middle of where you intend to place the actual fusion reactor, a 5x5x5 five by five by five cube. Yeah. To ignite the fusion reactor, you will need to produce a 1 giga RF, 1 billion RF pulse. Which, with a single laser, will take a long time to produce. More may be necessary. So I think what we do here is these lasers are like power inputs, and we point them into the amplifier, which will build up the charge until we release it. And that is how it will do. And with that, we should open the actual quest to build the reactor parts, yes. Mm -hmm. Let's just put those lasers away until we build the actual multi-block. So. The first thing is we're going to need a lot of these reactor frames. And you see that that is going to require a lot of steel. In fact, it's going to require so much, I think I'll put more... Well, actually, it's going to require a lot of refined steel, to be specific, because these, these steel casings... Yeah, they're made out of steel and titanium. Titanium's no problem. Well... Those titanium sheets I might want to order more of, because I'm down to my last couple hundred, so. But that's steel. Let's put another load of refined steel into the smelter. Refined steel goes a lot faster than baseline steel. Not exactly sure why. Well, I guess the hard parts are already done. Anyway, yes. You see that none of these parts are particularly hard. It's just that you're going to require a lot of them. And that's two ultimates, of course. But those aren't too bad nowadays. Making a pattern, because why not, even though I'll only need one. Of course, I need more reactor frame just to do the craft. And I don't actually have the patterns input yet. There we are, there's the craft. And these ports are relatively easy. Just yet another ultimate control circuit. Okay, and I think all the rest of it was just straight-up reactor frame, right? And the laser focus matrix. Ah, which is this reactor glass, which is relatively easy to produce. And there we are. I have no idea why it gives you two. You only need one. And quite frankly, I think you're only ever going to need one fusion reactor. I don't even need one fusion reactor. I am perfectly happy with my little gas burner. Ugh. Okay, so the next is just making a bunch of framing. Okay. 
which I'm just going to see if I can make a hundred of these. Eh, I need to wait on the titanium. That's almost the quest complete. Well, you know what that means. Okay, let's build us a multi-block. Oh yes, and of course, quest complete. Reward is pretty nice too. Two, well, they're just basic tanks. I'm using ultimate tanks. Th those, those basic tanks are for scrubs. Come on. Okay, so, fusion reactor. Starts with this lovely little star shape here. And then we do... That, I think. No, that doesn't look right. Now we do that, yes. And Zin is the next layer. It is a bit like I. Oh, that's right. I replaced some of my casings for reactor glass just for prettiness purposes. They serve the exact same purpose, they're just transparent. I think I'll have this whole middle layer and some of the lower layers made out of it. Now, this layer is where we'll be doing our actual input and outputs. So... Oops. So, port one... Hmm. How do I want to do this? Well, I think I definitely want the lasers on that side. So, where did I put the laser matrix? Yeah, I definitely want the lasers on this side. Because they, they'll probably be a big assembly in and of themselves. So these other three would be ports. One for each type of fuel and one for the power. Power would probably be on this side. Okay, so then this will be like deuterium and tritium. I might as well do that now. Let's run the deuterium there. And the tritium over there. And let's just have all these pipes up on the land just so that we have a nice lovely like mess of piping. Make it look a bit like the, uh, the Wendelstein type thing. Yeah. Or whatever it's called. Okay. And then, once again, we have a layer of threes, and I'm going to need more... kissings. Yeah, I think I'll only have that middle layer made out of glass. So I need more baseline casings. Well, no, I might as well use up Waste not, you know? There we go. So it's kind of middle layer is this lovely transparent thing. And then the final layer is just like the first. It's that star shape once again, which I will just make out of regular plating. And it has the controller in the center. Like a so. And this should form up. Hmm. Thank <laughs> you.
Okay, maybe it can only have two ports. Maybe the ports have to be opposite of each other. There's the problem. Reactor glass cannot be used for edges. So really, there's not very many places where you can use reactor glass. I made way too much of it. I was thinking it was kind of like big reactors where you could, you know, swap any piece of reactor plating for reactor glass. But no, it is much pickier than that. That did it. Yeah, look at that. Big old thing. So, we have the fuel coming in, and the, the lowest rate that is stable is 2. So you want to set your injection rate to 2 at first, and then kind of play it up and down to figure out how it works with your production. Once, of course, we get this thing lit. Hmm. Okay, so, fusion reactor in, fuel input ready, under production, all I need is a source of ignition. Now, ignition is made, of course, from these lasers. And I think the way these lasers work is fairly simple. First of all, we just need to get it on its level. So, which side is the output? Thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, million, ten hundred billion. One giga RF. That'll prevent it from firing until it has built up the necessary charge. And I have it on redstone mode high, so it won't it won't fire until Yeah. And I guess that's just for outputting redstone signals for automation. But which side is the output? I think it's Hmm. It must be that one side. Yeah, that might be an output. I don't know. Let's let's hook up some lasers and test it. So, Actually, let's get some cabling out. No laser, that's not the way I want you to go. There we go. You hear that lovely, lovely hum. This thing is charging up. Now, I think that even... Even with the limits I set, I should be able to take, like, a lever or something. 
and manually fire it to see which side its output is on. No, I guess not. So... Yep, that's the output. Okay. So, what I need to do now is I need to build an assembly of lasers all around this thing. Let me just put the lever on top of it so I can fire it. And I need to let this thing very slowly charge. Actually, yeah, let's let's move this laser back a little bit just because it looks so cool to watch it. Yeah, look at that. And I don't think these lasers hurt you. Well, these lasers do in fact hurt you. I know that the mega laser will really, really hurt if you get caught in it. Oh, it's so lovely and om uh, ominous. Not onimous. Onimous is not a word. Although there are no words to describe this. <laughs> Now, this would probably be close to the limit here, just on one thing. But I can make another amplifier, and I can have it feeding into this thing. You can, you can kind of use the amplifiers to, like, I could have a line of them coming up down here, firing off into an amplifier over here, and firing into that, and that would be the battery building it up. But you see that this is measuring output in thousands of RF. So these three lasers are actually quite bulky, and they're probably chewing up all of my power as it is. Hmm? Well, it's capping out this one gas-burning generator. This one's starting to kick on. It's it's kind of hard to tell because these things take forever to update because of this stupid tick whatever. Ugh. Oh yeah, and it's it's storing a tiny little bit of power because it got a little bit of heat from when I tested the laser. Now this fusion reactor should actually produce way more than these ultimate universal cables can hold. What I should do is I should build a big induction react induction battery casing and I should either have it directly touching it or I should use um, applied energistics to P2P energy buses, which I think have infinite production or infinite RF transfer rate. But just for right now, I'll only have the output hooked up to the cable, and that'll, that'll do for the moment. It doesn't particularly matter. Again, this is more power than I need. But yeah, it's just going to be a waiting game at this point. I guess I could make another laser thing. Let's just put it one block away. Normally, you want to kind of build them as a line, but, you know. Nope, that is not the output. Zot is the output. And this thing I want to ignore, and just, it's, it's, it's only going to be transferring. No laser. 
No, laser. Fine. There. Yes, you see? This thing is outputting into this laser amplifier here, and that's that's how you would chain these together to make a huge laser assembly. Oh, it's so lovely. Yes, and you see how the laser amplifier's beam is getting bigger as I add more and more power to it? That's going a little bit faster, but still, this is going to take for frickin' ever. To build up a thousand million RF? Yeah. Especially with this weird tick lag I'm getting. And you see that one laser assembly was, like, a little bit more than half of a gas burning generator's output. So, yep. This is the end of the episode. We aren't going to be able to fire this thing off till next time because this is going to take a while. So, I hope you had fun joining me on this adventure of advanced technology that no one needs. See you next time.